Good to see everybody. Midweek. How about that? Uh, good work today uh, out on the grass. Um, focusing on us here is, uh, you know, during the course of this bye week and, and trying to improve in the areas that we, we need to. Um, and there's a lot of ways that we can in, uh, in all three phases of the, uh, of the game. So uh, big week for us to continue to get better. You've heard me say it. Good teams continue to get better throughout the course of the year. And, um, you know, on the back end of the week, uh, a lot of our staff will be on the road recruiting. So open it up. Looks like we got a, bu a bunch of people that are taking a bye week <laughs> this week. You mentioned working on yourself. What are some of the areas that you'd like to see improvement this week? Communication, um, you know, in two of the phases for sure. Um, alignment, assignment, and technique from there. Um, everybody's got to be tied in together. And, and uh, there's a lot of good things that we've done here in the early part of the year that we did last Saturday. But uh, there's certainly some areas we got to get better at as well. Does how you approach the bye week change at all with having two this year and having one so early compared to previous seasons? Um, it, it's different. Um, it's been a long time since uh, I've had two during the course of the year. Early part of it, uh, certainly need to continue to improve fundamentals technique. Um, and, uh, you know, as you get to the second one, I'll probably look a little bit more at, uh, you know, the health of your roster and, and uh, being intentional on making sure that you're ready for that, that last run. You still anticipate getting uh, Hurd and Campbell back for Arkansas. And when you look back at Larry Johnson and Dane, how did they, what did they look like on tape? There, there's a lot of good things that, uh, that both of those guys did. Um, there's some things that uh, we can be cleaner in. Um, some of that is, you know, communication that gets to them. Some of it is them. Um, you know, structural change um, that we saw during the course of the, the football game, too. Uh, those guys being a little bit better uh, adjusting at it. All in all, um, a lot of really good things helped us get a win. So, got to continue to improve. That's them and, and all of us. Yeah, I, f I feel like we'll have uh, we'll have both of those guys when we uh, when we get to Fayetteville. Can you just talk about like how impressed you are by the the, the play of like you know Ricky Gibson, Jermon McCoy at the corner spot? It feels like those guys are playing really good football right now. Those guys have, have played uh, really good football. They played really well the other night. Jalen McMurray's played really well. Um, you know, we got some young guys that uh, continue to come along. Um, you know, just the type of football that they've played here in the early part of the year uh, has been a huge part of you know us continuing to, to push forward and, and the way that our defense has played in the in the early part of the year. And, and uh, at the same time, it's all three levels of the defense playing together too. Um, but uh, those guys have been phenomenal. Coach, you have a guy like Jason Jenkins who is, is sort of worked and, and bided his time to get his opportunity. I don't think he played a whole lot Saturday night, but made a huge impact on the game. What can you say about his development in your program? Yeah, it's just a guy that, uh, you know, you come in um, as a young player, you grow off the field. Uh, he's continued to, to just change his body, change his ability to move, bend, uh, the fundamentals uh, of the game. Um, he's done an unbelievable job just continuing to invest every single day. And when you invest, it may not always be on your time, but uh, you're going to cash it in at, at some point. And, and uh, made a huge play in, in the football game uh, last week. He played extremely well when he was out there. Uh, we have great confidence in him. This is uh, certainly a bye week question, but just what was your experience like on Sunday night at the concert? And do you feel like, you know, being able to put your brand on the in the spotlight in a different kind of way, just what sort of advantageous ways do you see that? Yeah, there's very few nights during the uh, the season where you get a chance to, to do something like that. So um, it was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, uh, a, a tremendous artist, right? But uh, he was just so welcoming. Um, you know, when uh, when we got to the stadium and and uh, his family there, um, it was a, a really cool experience. Um, it was a home game of a, of a different kind uh, to walk out to a full Neyland Stadium and uh, no football on the field. It was a, it was a really cool environment. Uh, you can't beat seeing, seeing uh, Peyton in his uni uniform, you know what I mean? And uh, try to get him to come back for one more. He said uh, he's done. But uh, um, it, was a, it was a neat experience. And, you know, Nico and Brew uh, having a chance to be a part of it. Uh, it was really, really neat. 
Coach, you said a minute ago about Jason Jenkins investing. When did you kind of start to see that out of him? Has he always kind of done that, or just kind of when did you start to see the turn to, to where he's at right now? <clears throat> no, it's just been uh, a continued process and journey uh, for him. Um, it's a guy that um, no matter what stage, um, he's just – he works every single day. You know exactly what you're going to get from him uh, from the moment he walks up the stairs, goes to meetings, to you know what you see in the weight room, to, to what you get out on the practice field. Just a super consistent guy. And, and uh, you know, everybody's journey is a little bit different. Sometimes it happens fast, sometimes it doesn't. He's just continued to work and invest, and that's why he's playing the way that, uh, that he does. Um, it's a great lesson for, for a lot of young guys. Um, there were a couple of plays back to back with the fumbles, then. On the next play, it's Joshua Joseph that gets in on the fumble yeah, recovery at the five-yard line. Yes. Yeah. What did that play tell you about the mentality of this defense to you know, be able to stay locked in when yeah. you're pinned back at the five? The way the defense handled the sudden change from our offensive turnovers uh, is as good as, as anywhere I've been. And I say that just the mentality, the, the look in their eyes, they took the field. Um, and then obviously creating the turnovers. Um, it was the difference in the football game early, for sure. As a longtime play caller and now head coach, is there a different mentality when you don't have to outscore or don't <laughs> feel like you have to necessarily outscore your opponent in every game? Does that change? as a head coach from a management and long-term view of your team this year? Well, I think every game, you, you've heard me say it, right? You play the same game 10 times on the same day. It unfolds differently. There's just so many variables within it. Um, the way our defense played on Saturday and the way they played early in the year, um, as an offense, you got to be ready to go find a way to be plus one no matter what happens. But then the game will form an identity during the course of the game. And uh, certainly on Saturday night, um, the way our defense was playing, um, you know, it formed an identity. And, and then it's about tying all three phases in together to make sure that uh, you end up on the right side of the scoreboard. Josh, you talked a little bit about Larry. Johnson early. What did you guys see in him in junior college and sort of how has he progressed in his two years here to where he's able to go play in that environment and yeah. hold his own? <clears throat> Big, massive uh, frame that had the ability to bend. Um, <clears throat> knew that he had to work on his body. I say we did. Um, when he got here, I mean, he's one of the guys we recognized during the course of multiple summers. Uh, he's done an unbelievable job with strength, but also on the nutrition side of it. Uh, he's a guy that works extremely hard, growing to learn and understand the game. And, um, you know, he's just continued to climb uh, since he's gotten here. Uh, really proud of, of how he's invested, how he's worked, and uh, now have an opportunity to get some playing time. Looking, looking back at the Oklahoma game, do you like how the staff handled the receiving rotation? Would you like to get more guys in, some guys on the field longer? Perfect how it is. Talking about the wide receiver position? Yeah, the rotation. <clears throat> well, the game um, – you know, we planned on using uh, some 12, 12 personnel, and as the game went on, we got into to more of it. So, uh, again, it's all a part of how the game, um, you know, the identity gets formed during the course of the, of the football game. And uh, you have a plan going into it, but then you also got to be able to adjust during the course of it. You mentioned the game ball would go in your office. I'm wondering if you've found a spot for it yet. have not found a spot for it, but uh, at some point she'll go up there. Had a couple of like late hit type things that were kind of maybe questionable calls. I'm going to get you into all that. But Which like, ones are you talking about? Like Arion, that type of thing. Like, but my okay. point is like, like, how do you, how do you? I don't want to get fined. How, how do you, how do you coach? How do you continue to tell them that hey, be, keep making that play, but also be cognizant that you got to be smart about it. <clears throat> Yeah, we, we use uh, teachable moments from across the country, college football, NFL football, uh, every Monday uh, during our team meeting uh, when we're de debriefing the game, but also how we can be smarter as a, as a football team. <clears throat> we show some of the things that happen, you know, while we're playing too. And, and um, you gotta, you got to play fast. you got to play physical. you got to be aggressive, um, but you got to be on the right side of it. And uh, in some ways, you got to understand how the game's going to be called. Um, you know, from an official's perspective, also understanding that uh, they're human too. Last two, Rick 
Coach, obviously Arkansas coming up, but with the open date, will you have a chance to look in on Georgia-Alabama with both of those teams also on the schedule this year? I have not planned my Saturday yet with uh, with my kids, so um, at some point I'll, I'll sit down and watch some ball and, and um, you know, we'll assume I get a chance to watch a little bit of that one. Hopefully my daughter hmm. takes me out on the golf course and beats up on me. Josh, what have you thought of how Elijah Simmons has played so far and where, where has he progressed? From, from last year? <clears throat> well, uh, set the tone um, with the first play of the, the football game. Uh, just violent and destructive. Um, he played that way all night long. Uh, does a great job uh, in the, uh, the goal line situation, eating up two blockers and, and uh, not getting, getting moved off of uh, the line of scrimmage. So uh, he's playing extremely well. Our defensive line as an entire group is playing extremely hard, really physical and playing with great fundamentals. Um, Elijah's a guy, you know, like when we first got here, just his ability to bend has continued to, to improve, um, which is, makes him a, an even more powerful, functional football player. And um, he's a guy that, uh, you know, like a couple of the other guys that I talked about today, just you know exactly what you're getting, man. He's a really mature guy. Um, and uh, when he comes out on the practice field, he's ready to work. Thank you. Thank you all.